Okay, this is actually a classical, a classic classical mechanics problem. Um, and I, I love this problem because you can solve it multiple ways, and I will solve it multiple ways eventually. But I'm going to start off with the with the easiest, most conceptually understandable way to solve this. So here's the problem: I have this inverted spherical bowl, or it could be it could be cylinder, whatever you want, it doesn't matter. And on top of that, I have this block of ice. So there's no friction, no friction, and it starts up here, and it and I give it a tiny little nudge, and it starts sliding down. The bowl and the question is when does it lose contact with the bowl got it okay so let's just start off with a let me redraw this and draw the force diagram on this uh, puck at this instant so here's my bowl that's a terrible circle and there's my ice and and what forces do I have acting on it at any particular point I have the downward gravitational force and then I have the upward pushing normal force from the bowl. And remember, the normal force has to be perpendicular to the bowl. And so two things happen. One, that normal force changes directions as it moves down. But two, as the puck starts to speed up as it moves down, then it's going to be accelerating this way. And so eventually the acceleration will be uh, such that there will be no normal force pushing it out and once n goes to zero when the magnitude of n goes to zero it loses contact no contact so really i want to find out when the normal force is equal to zero that's the key okay let's just start off with the a force diagram right here let's say if that's the angle theta that's the angle theta uh, and I want to say at this particular instant, I want to get an expression for the magnitude of the normal force. I don't need to do this in polar coordinates explicitly because I'm dealing with this instant right here. So let's call this the R, okay, I guess it is polar coordinates. Let's call this the R direction. If you want, you could call it the Y direction. Uh, so if I write this F net in the, in the, y, in the R direction, is gonna be equal to, uh, in right I have the normal force pushing in the R direction and then I have a component of the gravitational force pulling this way and so that is the gravitational force mg this side would be mg cosine theta so this would actually be minus mg cosine theta now that's the net force in the R direction what's the acceleration in the R direction well that would be m and then I would use the uh, it's a triple acceleration AC. It's going to be v squared over r, right? But r is constant in this case, so I'm actually going to write this as v squared over r. Now I can solve this for n, and I get n equals oh that's going to be negative, right? Because it's accelerating this way, so it's going to be n equals mg cosine theta minus m v squared over r. And I want to find out when that equals zero. But I have a problem in that, uh, yes, theta changes. I want to find that angle. But V changes too, right? The velocity changes as this moves down. So how do I find the velocity? Now we're going to switch directions here. We're going to use the work energy principle, work change in energy. And then I'll say the system of the ice plus the earth. And if I have the ice plus the earth as a system, I can have gravitational potential energy. And so I don't have work done by gravity. The normal force does zero work on the, on the system because it's perpendicular to the motion. So I have zero equals delta K plus delta U, where K is one half MV squared, U is mgy. So now the next thing I need to do is pick where is y equal to zero. And I'll pick down here y equals zero. So now I can put this in. Uh, I get zero equals the final kinetic energy, which I'm going to call one half mv squared. The initial kinetic energy, it starts up here at rest, such as zero. And then I have plus the final potential. So here's the block right there. We could call this y. Um, so this is going to be m g times y. But if you notice here, if this is r 
and that's theta. This is r cosine theta. So it's going to be r cosine theta minus the initial potential, which is going to be minus m g r, right? Because that's where it starts up here, r. So I can solve this for, I don't even need to solve this for v squared, I can solve this for v, right? Because I have to plug in up here v. So let's solve this for v, the first thing, the mass cancels. Uh, yeah, so I get v squared equals, move this to the other side, multiply by 2, I get 2 g r minus 2 g r cosine theta. All right, I just added, I, I, what I did was I subtracted this from both sides, I added that to both sides, and multiplied both sides by 2, and I get that. So now I can substitute this in up here, and I'm going to set the normal force equal to 0, because that's when the puck loses contact. So I get 0 equals, uh, and if I put that 0, the m cancels, right? I can divide both sides by m, so I get 0 equals g cosine theta minus v squared over r. So this is v squared, but I'm dividing by r, so I get minus 2g minus 2g cosine theta. Oh, wait. No. Plus. So minus v squared. So I have to subtract this whole thing. So I get minus 2g, the r is canceled, and I get plus x. I'm just multiplying that. Okay. So what do we have here? I can divide everything by g. The g's cancel. Um, I can add this, and I get 3. So I and I can I so I get two equals three cosine theta, cosine theta equals two thirds, so theta equals calculator time. And I'm gonna do two thirds, two enter three divided by trig a cosine. I get forty one no that's theta equals forty eight point one nine degrees and that's the angle from the top okay so that's where it loses contact now let's just look at a couple things one I, I think it's kind of amazing well, it, it's not amazing that it doesn't depend on the mass of the ice okay I think that's not surprising uh, it doesn't depend on the size of the bowl our ours not in there it doesn't depend on the gravitational field Okay, if I put this on the moon, it's going to lose contact at the same angle that if I put it on the Earth. That's kind of cool. And and the reason is because uh, if I put this on the moon, it's going to take longer to get down here, and it's going to be going slower once it gets to the bottom. But it doesn't need as much gravitational force pulling it this way towards the center so that the normal force doesn't have to push out as much either. So that all balances out at the end. But there you go. That's your classic classical mechanic problem of a block sliding down a bowl um, and where it loses contact. Now, I'll tell you, spoiler alert, I am going to do this problem again a little bit later, not, not now, a little bit later uh, using not forces and energy, but the Lagrangian, because it's a good problem for that too.